Welcome, Jessica. Today, we are going to be talking about first-time homebuyers, and you are with Residential Mortgage Network. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about yourself? Yes, thank you. So I have um, been a loan officer since 1999, long time. Um, our company, Residential Mortgage Network, is a locally owned uh, independent mortgage bank. So we vary a little bit um, from the local banks, credit unions, um, and that all our folk, we only focus on mortgages. So we often have products that sometimes other lenders don't offer, um, first-time homebuyer specialties, um, government loans like VA, rural development, FHA, and also do the regular conventional lending. So as an independent mortgage banker, we close loans in our name, and then we sell it on the secondary market. We sell to about 11 different servicing companies. So those servicing companies um, allow us to offer a variety of loan products. Um, our company has been... Um, here uh, in since 1987. We've been in business with the same owner. Wonderful. Yes, thank you. So what would you want put people out there thinking about buying a home, those that are renting maybe, and thinking, oh, I'm just kind of tired of paying somebody else, and I want to build some equity and have a future, and you know, first-time home buyer, what would you tell them as they're thinking about embarking on home ownership and starting to look for a property and they maybe even call their realtor before they call anybody. Yeah. Yep. So I think it's, I like to tell people it is never too soon to start the process. Whether you think you want to buy a house in a month or three years, um, gaining that knowledge and talking to different lenders and realtors to see what's available in the market will empower you when you're actually ready to get a full pre-approval and start looking at homes. Um, there are so many products available. There's sometimes a stigma out there that you have to have 20% down or you have to have, you know, 800 credit scores, those kind of things that, that scare people into starting the process. Um, but surprisingly, there's lots of options no matter what your situation is. So again, I think it's just making the call, sending the text, sending the email to just have a conversation with a loan officer and talk about what options are available. Yeah. Now, uh, talk about programs. A lot of times there are grant programs or even assistance programs that are either government backed, mm -hmm. federally backed, that help first time home buyers, or even just locally backed. Yeah. Do you offer any of those? We do. So um, the biggest first time home buyer program that we participate in is through an entity called Iowa Finance Authority. They have a great website too to check out information, but it's important to work with a participating lender. So um, you can find the participating lender list online. Um, but that program, they have different programs available within their um, operation. But Iowa Finance Authority programs are combined with any of our other loan programs. So somebody will qualify for either a conventional loan, rural development, also called USDA, VA, or FHA. And then the IFA program is kind of a cherry on top to that. And what they offer is sometimes a reduced interest rate, but the bigger assistance programs would be a $2,500 grant or down payment assistance of up to 5% of the purchase price. So that 5% of the purchase price would fully cover somebody's down payment under most of our loan programs if a down payment's required and will also cover the closing costs. So um, it's a great program. There are There's a maximum purchase price maximum income limits, but those are everything that a lender will talk through with you to make sure that you qualify. Oh, great. Now, um, let's talk about the interest rates for first-time home buyers. Sometimes uh, not a lot of credit history mm -hmm. uh, or sometimes a low credit. And um, not everybody's going to get the same. I think a lot of people think, what are they always say, what, what are interest rates? Yeah. And my initial reaction is always, well, that depends. Mm -hmm. That's and a good answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, what would you say to a first-time home buyer when they're thinking about buying and they don't, they have no idea, and they're saying, "What are interest rates?" Yeah, very common question. But I encourage people to focus on what would my payment be. Interest rates are important. They can vary with loan program, with lender, that type of thing. But the problem is, you know, when we first have a conversation with a buyer, the interest rate might be at X. But then by the time they find a house and can secure an interest rate, it could be higher or lower than that. So it's important to understand or get a feel for what you feel comfortable paying on a monthly basis um, with a little bit of wiggle room there, you know, up or down, so that you uh, feel okay as you're searching for homes. Um, but interest rates also come with, it. it's so important with interest rates that you speak directly to a loan officer. You can do lots of Googling, searching for national rates, local rates for companies that have them online. But the problem is 
depending on, it depends on how much money you have down, the type of program, um, your credit score. If you're a first time home buyer, so many factors go into that, that it would be really hard to produce a totally accurate rate sheet online for folks to follow. Right. So again, just setting that budget, you know, sometimes I like to tell people you're paying rent every month. So whatever you're paying in rent, maybe increase that to what you think might feel affordable. So add a few hundred dollars to that, tuck that away in savings every month, get a feel for what it would feel like to make a mortgage payment. Um, or if you're not paying any rent right now, if you have that luxury, pretend like you're paying rent, save that money every month, work through a budget so that the actual mortgage payment isn't scary when you, when you have that. A little bit of playing Monopoly in a way. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> play with your money before you actually have it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you have to pay it. And faced with it, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. So when you're thinking about that payment, some of the components of that payment might be, if you don't have 20% down, mortgage insurance. Yep. Right, it, which in some uh, loan terms is called mortgage interest. Pr prim PMI. PMI versus MIP. Version. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit yeah. about those? Great question. So- PMI, MIP, it depends on the loan program that you're participating in. So that's another thing that um, it's you can research some things online, but not get all the answers. For people are less scared of PMI now, I feel like, but there was definitely a time period where people would say, ooh, don't buy a house if you have to pay PMI. But the way I look at PMI is it's allowing people to purchase a home without 20% down. And PMI has become very competitive. So it is not typically a super high fee on a monthly basis, but it depends a bit on the loan program. So FHA has a set PMI rate, no matter what your credit score is, no matter how much money you have down. Um, VA loans actually don't have any PMI. Uh, rural development USDA loans have a set PMI rate. So again, that's not anything you have to shop from lender to lender. Conventional loans are the ones that um, the PMI varies heavily depending on your credit score, uh, debt to income ratio, how much money you have down, and specific loan program. Gotcha. Now, when we talk about first time home buyers, it's not a single definition, There's is that. it? Yeah. <laughs> so, a first time home buyer can have technically owned a home before. So, the definition of a first time home buyer is somebody that hasn't owned a home as a primary residence in the last three year period. And we verify that through tax returns. So that's why also when somebody is participating in a first-time home buyer program, we get three years of tax returns to show that they haven't deducted any mortgage interest. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes people have sold a house, chosen to rent for a while, or maybe they moved here from out of state and they're renting that house but haven't purchased one here yet. They can still qualify as a first-time home buyer. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And that mortgage, and we're going to go back to the mortgage insurance for a second. That's if you don't put 20% down. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So talking specifically about conventional loans for a minute, if you have less than 20% down, you pay PMI. And it's also um, a rating. So 3% down, 5% down, 10% down. It goes down. The PMI goes down as you put more money down. There's also different ways to pay your PMI. Sorry, this is kind of a complex answer. <laughs> um, you can pay it on a monthly basis, or you can pay it as what's called a single pay PMI. So some people really like that option too, especially if you have at least 10% down, you can pay a one-time lump sum and not have that monthly PMI. Oh. So that's something that, again, a loan officer should be able to work through those options with you to help you decide what is the best for your situation. Oh, that could be the use of a, maybe a, an annual bonus or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or seller paid credit, right. anything like that. Oh, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, let's talk about some of those credits or concessions. Sometimes we refer to them as concessions yeah. when we're writing offers. Um, what are some of the things that first-time home buyers might want to consider when they are making an offer on a property with their realtor to write into their offer that would be acceptable yep. to the uh, different loan programs? Good question. So um, a common thing that I talk to buyers about is having the sellers pay some of their closing costs and prepaids. Uh, now that is not a good fit for every property. As you may know, if you're going in making an offer on a property and you're not the only one making an offer on a property or you're the very first one to make an offer on a property, that pro newly listed property, it might not be an option to get that seller credit. But if it is an option, um, working in the contract to have them pay some of your closing costs and prepaid so that you can focus on, you know, either sometimes people ask for a credit for closing costs and prepaids, they still have money in the bank, but they want to be able to save it. 
as reserve funds or maybe work they want to do to the home or something like that. Um, I think that a common amount to ask for, probably not more than $3,000 in most cases. Most lenders, closing costs should be around $2,000. Um, that's for appraisal, credit work, title work, all of that. Um, and then you have your prepaids like homeowner's insurance, starting up your escrow account. So um, I think 3000 maybe 4000 tops if you're getting some prepaids covered. So your realtor helps you negotiate that in the contract. You're typically paying a little bit more for the home to have them give you that credit back, but can help in a cash position. Oh, very good. Um, what about VA buyers? What's What are some things that are a little bit different about working with VA clients? Yeah. We love VA loans, um, and I always think it's so important to understand that where you're getting your VA loan is really important. So um, the advantage to the program is it doesn't require that you put any money down and you still get a 30-year fixed interest rate, not paying any monthly PMI. And the interest rate on a VA loan is typically a little bit lower. Um, every now and then there's some resistance in the market because people have maybe gone to a lender that hasn't done very many VA loans, or maybe they don't underwrite them right there at their office. So the sellers or maybe a realtor involved is a little bit nervous that they think the process is going to take longer. But an institution like Residential Mortgage Network, we underwrite them right here at our office. We've been doing them for as long as our company's been in business. So to us, they're easy peasy. We could close them in two weeks. Um, so I really try to get that message out of making sure that, you know, the lender matters really in any situation, but especially with a VA loan, the lender matters. Yeah. I think, um, one of the things that I've noted when working, when we've done a few transactions, mm -hmm. clients that are VA, um, they get marketed to by other lenders who position themselves to be more maybe even tied to the Veterans Administration, yep. which I don't believe is correct. Correct. Nobody ever goes directly to VA to get a loan. So I'm so glad you brought that up because we try to get that message out a lot too. But some of the companies that are online, I mean, they have names that make you think they are VA. So a lender gets approved to offer VA loans. Um, so that's how we are able to do them. And that's how not, and that's also why not every lender offers VA loans because if they haven't gone through the approval process, then they just don't have the authority to offer the program. Um, the other difference again is that underwriting piece. So we have a VA approved underwriter, so that's why it is a super smooth process with our office. Some institutions are still good institutions, but they might have to broker out their VA loans, so go through a third party, which can sometimes just add a little bit of time um, to the process. But if a lender underwrites them, they should be very smooth. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. What is the one thing, last thing that you'd want to tell a first-time homebuyer uh, as they're preparing to search for their first home? Don't be scared. Take that step. I think it's, you know, people, I can hear them be so nervous to call me or email me or text me. But once we get on the phone or meet in person to have a conversation, you can just see that they become so much more relaxed because it's not a scary process. We've seen it all, whether an income situation is a little bit different or a credit situation is a little bit different. If somebody's had a few credit glitches in the past, we can give them some tips on that. A lot of times they can even still qualify. Um, so I love when I finish meeting with somebody and they're like, that wasn't that hard. So that's exactly right. It's really not that hard, even though it's scary because you feel like you're giving up you know, all of your personal information. Yeah. But again, this is something loan officers hear day in and day out. And we love to hear what the situation is and then navigate it and help you decide what is going to work for you. Yeah, I, I kind of think of what we do, even though we're not exactly in the same business, we serve the same clients and we're big puzzle makers. Yeah. Puzzle, we just love to figure out the puzzle. Yeah. Finding the house, finding the loan. Right. Yeah. And I think it's important too, to establish a relationship with your loan officer and not to be afraid to tell them things, you know, so if you're, we always tell people don't change jobs in this process, but there are situations where you can change a job. So just talk to your loan officer and say, you know, I might be offered this better position at another company. What would that look like for me? Um, rather than feeling like you just have to, you know, freeze while you're, while you're going through this process there, there are not hard, there are some hard stops, but there's not a hard stop to everything. We just try to put out as much information to um, keep the process smooth for everybody. Oh, fantastic. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, thank you for joining us for another uh, episode of Real Talk. 
and join us next time.